If you're currently at home like all of us here at the Unlocking Our Sound Heritage project, you might well be looking for some new projects around the house with which to keep yourselves occupied. And we were thinking that perhaps a journey into our own personal archives might be just the thing. When you think about it, every home has the potential to be an archive. Even the most hardcore devotee of the minimalist lifestyle will probably have an old box of tapes or records lying around somewhere, so why not embark on a journey through time and have a dig through them? London Metropolitan Archives is one of 10 regional hubs across the UK that joined the British Library's Unlocking Our Sound Heritage project in 2018 to help preserve almost half a million rare and at-risk sound recordings. But of course that's just the beginning. With all of the UK's analogue formats at increasing risk of degradation and loss, one of our key aims is to pass on some of these preservation skills to the great British public and beyond. This video is intended as a general introduction to the topic and assumes very little prior knowledge. But regardless of your experience, going over the basics is seldom a bad idea. Today we're going to be looking at records, or more specifically phonograph records, those black plastic discs that have been responsible for more seismic moments in the history of music and culture than any other format. When a record is placed on a turntable and a needle or stylus inserted into the groove, the vibration of the stylus as the record rotates converts this groove into a sound signal, which is then amplified so that it can reach our ears. Its pedigree is impeccable, but as a format it's certainly not without its drawbacks, and preserving a collection of records in perfect condition and working order can be a huge challenge. There were many different versions of the phonograph disc developed in the first half of the 20th century, but for argument's sake we're going to be dealing today with the two most common, the gramophone or shellac disc and the later polyvinyl microgroove long playing disc, generally referred to simply as vinyl. The shellac discs as a rule are visibly older, quite a bit thicker than vinyl LPs and heavier and more brittle to the touch, and strangely enough they also feel colder. Grooves on shellac discs are visibly wider than their polyvinyl record descendants, and so if you try to play a shellac disc with a needle designed for a microgroove LP, or vice versa, you get horrible sounding results and will do a good deal of damage both to the record and to your playback equipment. Also, the vast majority of gramophone discs were played at 78 revolutions per minute, much faster than a vinyl disc's 33 or 45 RPM, and a speed that the majority of modern turntables aren't equipped for. But the problems don't end there. Shellac discs are notoriously brittle and easily damaged. Even listening to them causes degradation, and that's before you consider the fact that their aural fidelity is rarely that great to start with. Vinyl discs came later, and are generally thinner and more flexible, with distinctly better sound quality. But in their own way they're also fragile, easily scratched and marked by accident, which can lead to the stylus jumping grooves or becoming stuck. And yet they tend to be pretty hardy too. Even after leaving a box of LPs sitting for several days in six inches of flood water, there's a pretty good chance that they'll play perfectly well once they've been cleaned up, speaking from experience here. Whichever version of the format you're working with, observing some basic rules is advisable. Handle all discs with extreme care, holding each with the rim between your palms, hands at three and nine o'clock, and being sure never to touch the grooves with your fingers. Never place records on top of one another, even when they are in the sleeves, and most importantly of all, avoid leaving them in a basement that's prone to flooding. Store them vertically upright on a sturdy shelf or in a wooden crate when not in use, and ensure they're not leaning on one another. Even a small collection of records can weigh an awful lot, so do make sure your shelving and your flooring is able to cope with them. Make sure that they are in a cool, dry environment away from all sources of heat. Placing a collection near radiators or heating pipes is a surefire way to ruin it. All records must be stored in a paper inner sleeve and a cardboard outer sleeve. New sleeves can be purchased cheaply online if required. We'd advise getting rid of any shrink wrap as this can shrink further over time and cause damage to the sleeve. If novelty records such as picture discs have been stored in PVC covers, remove this at once and replace it with a paper or card alternative, as there is growing evidence that proximity to PVC covers can damage vinyl over time. Obviously don't throw it away if it's an integral part of the package, just store them separately. It's worth investing in a good anti-static cloth to remove static charges on the discs, both before and after playback. 
Static buildup attracts dust and dirt, and this is something to which vinyl is particularly susceptible. If the records are especially dusty or dirty, you might consider cleaning them, although this should only be undertaken with a great deal of caution. We suggest lightly spraying your record with a mix of deionized water and a few drops of mild cleaning solution specifically designed for records. Numerous brands can be acquired cheaply online. Clean away any dirt or smudges using a microfiber cloth, again being careful not to touch the center label with the cloth or the grooves with your fingers. If it's particularly dirty, we suggest using the same mix of deionized water and solution, but this time filling a bucket. Gently immerse the record in this solution, but be sure not to get the labels wet. Washing records is a delicate process, not without a certain amount of risk, but if carried out carefully, the results should be immediately obvious. When done, rinse the disc with more deionized water and carefully pat dry with a microfiber towel. Then allow the record to fully dry before replacing it in the sleeve. The dish rack by the kitchen sink is perfect for this, but make sure you've done all the washing up first. Once you've got all your records cleaned and properly stored, it's time to put them into some kind of order and see what you've got. The online database Discogs.com is a free and extremely useful tool for helping identify and catalogue your collection and great for doing a bit of detective work, figuring out not only exactly what recordings you have, but also what version of them you have. This is worth doing even with the more familiar items. There's always a small chance that that million selling 1960s rock LP in your collection might actually be an unusual edition of that release, perhaps with an alternate track listing or a different mix of the songs. Each record should have a unique catalogue number etched into the runout groove near the label, which can also prove useful in identifying the release should the information on the label be damaged or obscured in any way. Search for this on Discogs and who knows, you might be in for a surprise. Of course it's just possible that your collection might include some items that don't appear on Discogs at all, and this is often where the real voyage of discovery begins. The history of music is littered with all kinds of obscure records from long lost artists, and these can often prove a far more intriguing prospect than the mega selling rock albums that everyone has already heard a hundred times before. Indeed, with many modern DJs and record labels spending a huge amount of time and effort hunting out forgotten records to champion as lost classics, it's entirely possible that your collection may include some secret treasures of its own. Perhaps you'll find limited edition releases or even private pressings, effectively a homemade album self-released without the backing of a record label. Some discs such as acetates or lathe cuts are rarer still and may even exist only as a single copy. On the other hand, you might find cheap novelty items such as musical postcards and flexi discs, which were considered disposable in their time, but nowadays may offer an important window into the past. In our experience, focusing on the unfamiliar, the forgotten, and the stuff that frankly just looks a bit weird is usually the best place to start. Isn't that right, Doctor? Hopefully this short introduction will have inspired you to go digging in cupboards, basements and attics, and who knows, you might uncover a genuine piece of sonic history, or at least a few surprises. Either way, if you find anything interesting or unusual, we'd love to hear it. From all of us here at Unlocking Our Sound Heritage, good luck and happy listening. <laughs>